What is up my planting people? My name is Lithius and welcome to Roots Ready. Today is gonna to be the first Q&A video that I've ever done on this channel. Um, to be honest with you, I was a little bit nervous that I would get absolutely no questions at all, but you guys completely blew my mind because I've got so many questions to go through on here, some of which are about plants and some of which are about just myself, uh, what I do outside of plants, which is just great. Um, and I'm just surprised that people even wanted to know that about me. So thank you so much for everyone who posted a question. I'm going to try to get through all of them today. I have no idea how to start this, but <laughs> we'll just go straight into it. I am going to be doing a bit of a repot as well. I've got lots of plants that are in need of a little touch up or um, an actual like repot. Some of which I've got growing in water like this. This is there are quite a few plants in here, so they all need to be. Uh, put into some soil or something else um, and I've got some anthuriums over here some seedlings that need just a little bit of a touch up a top up of uh, moss because they're completely growing out I don't know if you'll be able to catch that on, on the camera but they're growing out of the uh, out of the substrate and the roots are coming up so I just want to get them covered up um, and hopefully hopefully they'll they'll root a bit more the leaves will grow a bit larger and uh, they can be ready for sale, hopefully very, very soon. Okay, so I wrote the questions down on a piece of paper because I'm using my phone to record. So I hope you guys don't mind. Um, the first question uh, that I'm gonna talk about is, someone said, love your name, what does it mean? Lithius, if you guys don't know, my name is Lithius. Um, interesting question, thank you so much. Um, I've got some moss here, by the way. Uh, my name, Lithius, is a combination of my parents' names. Um, so my mum's name is Leah, my dad's name is uh, Matthias. So they've combined their names together to come up with Lithius, which is quite innovative if you ask me. Um, uh, quite original as well. Uh, but if you were to ask my sister, she'll say that I'm, uh, I'm version 2.0. Uh, because her name is Lithia and she's older than me. So I say I'm the new and improved. Uh, <laughs> she probably wouldn't agree <laughs> with that. So that's the sort of the background on my name, where it came from. All right, just going to get this moss around the plant like so. Now, the same person actually asked me... Uh, uh, my channel name how did I come up with my channel name now I remember when I first started I think it was in 2019 December 2019 uh, just before then um, I really you know I got the bug and I really wanted to start YouTube I'm just watching loads I had plants before but I was just watching loads of videos online um, and I was just like you know what I think I could do this I think I could um, and I remember going up uh, uh, speaking to my sister and we just started brainstorming some names for the channel. Um, I haven't got the list anymore of like what some of the um, what some of the names are going to be, but it could have been a whole lot of stuff. I think originally I wanted it to be Ready Roots instead of Roots Ready, but unfortunately that name was taken on Instagram. So I thought, okay, Roots Ready kind of works. And then it kind of originally I wasn't sold by the name. But then it grew on me after a while. Um, and yeah, I just I just love it. I think it makes more sense now than ready roots. Roots ready, because you know, the roots are ready. It makes more sense just grammatically <laughs> speaking. So yeah, that's the story behind the channel name. It's yeah, just sort of happened. Me and my sister sat down and just came up with it over literally it was like in a couple of hours, which was which was quite nice. So somebody asked, how did you first get into plants? Now, it's an interesting question. I don't think it happened overnight, per se. Um, I remember growing up in St. Lucia, um, we had, like, a practical garden, and my parents always grew uh, food, like crops and, and you know, little peas and, and tomatoes and stuff like that. So I've always grown up around it when I grew up in St. Lucia, which was very... Um, which was a lovely upbringing. I really did love it, um, you know, getting to play around in the in, in the in the trees, climbing trees, um, going down to like a little river thing, which was near my house. It was really nice. I was really like country living 
um, growing up, which I absolutely loved. I have a lot of fond memories of that. So I've always been kind of connected to plants in one way or another. And um, yeah, coming to the UK, obviously that was, uh, there are less plants growing up in the city in London. Um, but my parents, my mum has always, you know, liked her plants, like especially orchids. She really does, um, loves orchids in terms of like um, flowers and stuff. Um, so when I first moved, out i remember getting plants literally just to fill up a windowsill because it was so bare there was nothing on there i'm just like yeah i need to bring some life to this house so i got a couple of orchids um, and just had them on a windowsill and didn't really think much of it um they were just sort of there i kept them alive um they weren't something that i was how can i how can i explain it i i wasn't i wouldn't say i was a plant enthusiast at that point i just sort of had them for practical reasons and then moving again to this house I remember buying a larger plant um, like a floor planter um, what is it the uh, the dragon tree um, from Ikea and it was like a, quite a big one and then it sort of you know that was a little bit piqued my interest just a little bit more just like I can see how you can make a house look really really beautiful um, from having you know some amazing plants like statement pieces but when it really really kicked off it <laughs> was when I went to a friend of mine, uh, I went to her house and she has an unbelievable collection of plants. Not only do they look absolutely amazing, they are just stunning to, um, you know, to look at. And it just, it just made the whole house feel alive. Um, and it was just beautiful. I remember just leaving her house. I think we went uh, for like a little dinner or something um, and went over there. <laughs> And I think it was after that, I was like, yep, I'm going to get into this. I'm going to get some more plants. And then, yeah, from there, it just sort of exploded. And then that sort of coincided with COVID, having more time to be at home. Um, and I just thought to myself, yeah, this is amazing. Started watching more videos on YouTube. And yeah, the rest is history. The rest is history. This is where it's taken me so far. And who knows what's left to, what's left to come out of this. Another question is... Uh, why did you leave your home island? Um, yeah, I just spoke really sort of lovingly about St. Lucia, didn't I? So if you don't know, I'm from St. Lucia, grew, uh, born and raised, uh, left there when I was eight, actually. So quite a young, a young, a young boy, um, 20 years living in the UK now. Um, it wasn't my choice. It was literally my parents decided to relocate, um, and yeah, just, just came with them. So, um, so I, I would say that I'm definitely um i'm more accustomed to sort of uk culture than i am to set Lucia because i've just lived here most of my life anyway uh most of my friends all of my friends are from from here you know from you know either working with different people from school and so on so yeah but i still love set Lucia. i try to go back as often as possible once a year um just to sort of keep, keep that connection because it's just a beautiful beautiful island if you ever get the chance to go definitely check it out you will not regret it trust me so another question is describe yourself and your personal interests outside of plants. <laughs> okay, so well, where do I where do I even start? <laughs> um, myself. So how would I describe myself? I, I I am a bit of a I love an adventure. I love trying new things. Um, I love food. I love music. In fact, um, I used to actually play the drums, the bass guitar. Um, at church actually um, for many many years so music is sort of in my blood I really do love it I sing all the time I, I used to be part of a choir I used to lead it at one point um, so yeah just love singing love music it's, it's in me um, what else do I do other hobbies that I have I love sports I go to the gym but before I went to the gym I actually did uh, Muay Thai which is a kind of kickboxing it's um, punches, kicks, knees, elbows. But trust me, I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> um, I do, I, I love combat sports. Um, in fact, I actually um, competed at a professional level. Um, I did it for about 10 years, actually. A long, long time. Competed at a professional level. Currently, undefeated, heavyweight, champion. Um, undefeated, one fight, one win. Decided to retire after that. <laughs> That's what I tell everyone. I just say, retire at the top, you know? <laughs> 
but yeah, so I, I love um, yeah boxing. I'm trying to get back into it now since I've moved uh, just outside of London. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult. I've changed jobs, which makes it a bit harder to go back to the original gym that I used to go to or the club that I used to go to. But I am trying to get back into it because it is a passion of mine. Did you expect that? Did you expect me to say that I was a, uh, I, I did competitive boxing? And if you search YouTube, actually, you might be able to see my professional fight on there. I won't link it in here. It's not one that I'm particularly, uh, yeah, it was a tough, it was a tough old bout, that one. Um, and I was really blowing afterwards. I was like, <laughs> just thinking about it now. But yes, that is something, that's another little secret about me uh, anything else that i enjoy doing i love to travel um I, I used to before covid used to travel all the time um to different places uh at least a couple of times a year maybe three or four times a year especially these like european countries because they're so close to the uk and it's so easy to get there and get around sorry it's a bit of a mess around around me because I've got all of my sort of potting stuff. I've got moss here. I've got soil. I've got a little bit of pond left and some other stuff. So yeah, it might just be <laughs> a bit haphazard today. So I do apologize. Um, next question. So how many plants do you have? I don't know is the short answer. I've never counted them, but if I had to estimate, I'll definitely say that it's over a hundred. I don't know if we would count cuttings. Like for example, there are loads of cuttings and loads of seedlings in this. Loads of seed, seedlings in another pot just like it. Um, and I've got cuttings galore all over the place. So I wouldn't count each cutting as a separate thing. But if we're talking about plant, individual plant species, um, I would say I have maybe maybe just over 100 um, different plants just scattered all over the house. Most of them are located here, which is unfortunate because I live with other people and, yeah, they just damaged this, this uh, mad rag behind me actually it got damaged earlier this week and i'm so upset about it like it's got a huge hole in it i'll show you oh yeah that, that was really upsetting to be fair but yeah living with other people and having plants you got to sort of work around them um <laughs> which is a uh, which is uh fun sometimes other times not so much but anyway um so yeah so about a hundred maybe just a little bit over a little bit less i'm not too sure uh, but yeah, and probably I would say still a growing collection. How tall are you? <laughs> Good question. I guess it's hard to tell from um, from YouTube videos, but I am six foot two. Uh, I won't know what that is in meters. Maybe one hundred and eighty something. I, I don't know. Um, but yes, I do wish I was slightly taller. Though I am quite tall, but I wish I was just just a little bit taller. Uh, mainly because of uh, Muay Thai, boxing. Um, being taller is definitely an advantage. You get that reach, um, which is which is good. And yeah, I've got some friends that are taller than me as well. And I would love to to rival them as well. So yeah, I, I am kind of tall, if, if you were to ask. Depending on who you ask. So I think that's done. Let's put that to the side. And then we'll grab the other one. Okay, so here's the second tree. Um, there's probably slightly less. Some of the um, some of the uh, plants really didn't take off. Like they just look really tiny. So I don't know if they're gonna survive. They're still green. They're, they're, they're doing something, but I don't know if they're gonna actually continue to grow like I want them to. But anyway, that's all right. Next question: uh, Plants you regret buying? Oh God, uh, they must be a few to be fair i remember the first sort of rare plant purchase that i i did was uh during the the hype the plant boom and i went ahead and i bought a monstera elbow cutting and within two or three weeks that thing had rotted and died on me and i, I remember just feeling absolutely gutted it was the first time i spent sort of big bucks on a plant and it just ah oh, yeah it just did not do anything for me it just died from day one and i tried to save it i did try to salvage it but it was too little too late but you know you live and learn other plants that i regret buying um i mean there are some plants that i've bought and i'm not completely 
completely in love with them um and i thought i would be for example i've got a if i can grab it back here i've got a philodendron uh atobawensis oh if i can grab it if i'm making a mess like this this is a cross between a bilatai and a ato is it atobawensis i think it is if that's if i'm saying it correctly um it's okay but it just it's just a bit meh <laughs> i mean I, do i regret buying it i thought when i bought it i was really excited because i thought it would sort of size up really really quickly but it hasn't done anything this is the largest leaf and it's still tiny it just doesn't really do much but maybe it's the conditions i'm growing it in i've got it in pond um it it just seems to it's just surviving at, the, at this point. Um, so that's one I would say that I regret um, buying. Anything else that I've got back here? I've got an Ethereum Vital Refolium behind me. And that thing is just, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get it, one second. So this Ethereum Vital Refolium over here, it, I've always wanted a strap leaf Ethereum, but this one, I, it doesn't really do much for me. Um, I've, it was in pond at one point, um and i have moved it into soil before that i actually bought it and it came in moss and it was losing every time we put out a new leaf it will lose a, a, an older one and it just it just seemed to i just don't seem to understand what its its care requirements are i've tried everything tried high, higher humidity lower humidity nothing so this is one of the plants that i struggle with um to grow at the moment it's not doing anything i've had it it's been sitting like this for months now no growth nothing it's just a really if you guys know how to how if you have any tips for me do let me know because i would love to i would love to have this as like a, an actual large specimen but it's just really really slow um but anyway i think those are the probably the two that i regret buying the most um and there are probably some more if i think of any more i i, I will say but yeah those are those are the two that I just think to myself, like, they, I, I have them, I keep them alive, but do they bring me joy? I don't think so. So maybe I should look to sort of pass them on to someone that would uh, appreciate them a lot more than I would. Okay, next question. Whose collection slash setup are you most jealous of? This is a great question. An absolutely brilliant question. I don't think there's anyone set up that I'm particularly jealous of but if I could choose um there's some people whose the spaces that they grow their plants in are uh, it's just fabulous so um memo from house planty goodness and Claire from the jungle haven there they both have conservatories um so it's like a glass extension of a house you know and it's just got amazing lighting Oh, I would do anything to have an extension, like just a, 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 almost like a greenhouse built into my house and have and be able to style it the way that I want. That would be incredible. So I do love their collection. It's they, they've got amazing plants in there, but I'm most jealous of their of the space that they grow their plants in. I wish I wish I could uh, have something similar to that. But yeah, maybe some at some point in the future, who knows? I've seen that some of the moss that I have in here has actually started to grow well. Some of it, not all of it, but that's really, really nice. I do love to see like when moss is like really green and thick and it's alive, you know, it looks amazing. So hopefully these ones also spring back to life. That would be that would be helpful. <laughs> uh cool. So let's get that around there i don't know if i said but this is like a collection of forgetti eye and theory forgetti eye uh seedlings that i grew myself so i pollinated self-pollinated the forgetti eye with itself um and i harvested the seeds and now they're growing i have managed to trade a few um if you haven't seen my another plant swap event video definitely go have a look at that i swapped it for an amazing uh, Hoya Seborak, which is for me, that was just a fabulous, fabulous trade. Um, I, I can see it right there. It looks incredible. It's such a great plant. So another question, I'm getting carried away. Another, <laughs> another question is, 
what do you want to see more slash less of in the plant community? I I would still um, I still consider myself a bit of a newbie to the plant community. Um, for example, I've only ever been to one plant event. I think people who are diehard plant enthusiasts they tend to go to them a bit more. Um, so for me, I want to see more events like that. I want to see more people come together just to share the, the love of plants and just actually being in a space of actual genuinely good hearted people like that last event i went to really gave me hope for humanity again because honestly man it was it's uh it's it's tough to find people out there that just genuinely care um yeah about the planet about other people about just just joy um so it's it's really nice i want to see more of that i want to see more collaborations um i want to see uh you know people maybe thinking more about I mean, I'm probably guilty, to, uh, about, you know, to this as well because I don't really think about it much. But just thinking about how we how we're more sustainable in the way that we collect plants because there are pros and cons to doing it. You know, potentially we could be taking plants away from you know nature and and we could be doing a great great deal of damage to the environment. You know, because we you know we often ship plants from one place to another. And I'm guilty of this as well, as I'm saying, I'm, I'm holding my hands up. Um, and although we try to, you know, recycle packaging and, and, and stuff like that, you know, I'm sure there's a lot more that we can do. Just, for example, the plant swap events, instead of shipping stuff from one place to another, if everyone comes together, you know, that's one way of reducing our carbon footprint. And, you know, there's some plants that are rare and extinct. And, you know, because we have the, the skill, we could potentially be looking at, um growing these plants to in order to get them back into their natural environment so i'd love to see a bit more of that um and as i say I, it's not something i do currently but i would love to do it um in the future oh no i just damaged the leaf anyway but yeah i hope that i hope that uh makes sense what do you think what, what would you guys like to see more of in the plant community i would love to see more yeah just less controversy and and, and more more collaboration really another question is what is your most difficult plant oh gosh um <laughs> i would say one of my most difficult plants is my pitcher plant my nepanthes um it's it's not super super difficult but it just requires a slightly different care so i have all of my plants on a watering and fertilization routine uh, where I either do it once a week or once every other week, depending on how, how I feel. But I have like one giant spray, pressure sprayer bottle that I'll go around and spray them with. But because pitcher plants, uh, they need to be fertilized through the actual pitchers by feeding them either insects or uh, fertilizer, um, like beads. Um, when, I, when it comes to watering the soil, I have to water it with fresh water. So it's one of those ones that it, it just needs a little bit, a little bit of extra care and attention. Um, at the moment, another plant that I am, I wouldn't say completely struggling with. Um, however, it has taken a slight step backwards is my um, Anthurium cuticuense, where it started to produce the tri leaf. So that's sort of that fork shaped leaf. Um, however, the last two leaves have come out with just two blades and I'll show you actually if I can pull it out Okay, so here it is. This is the cuticuense and you can see this was the last leaf to come out with that trifecta This one has only come out with two as has this one and then this new one over here Which I've just bent slightly has also just come out with two leaves or two um, I'm not sure what those called leaflets um as well so yeah i'm not sure what's going on with it i'm going to leave it to the side here i think i need to sort out that leaf that i've just bent which is a real shame so yeah that's another plant that i'm struggling with at the moment but i think that's it for this plant over here this uh tray of forgetii so we'll get rid of that now okay so the next plant that i'm going to be repotting are these ones over here this one is a hybrid between my Anthurium magnificum cross regal and my forget and my forgetii. So um, this one, the the mother plant, the one that gave the seeds, was the mad rag, and the pollen came from the forgetii. 
and likewise these ones over here are the similar mix the same mix however the pollen came from the mad rag and the seeds came from the forgetty eye and as you can see there's a much much higher yield in this one over here and i'll show you guys so i'm not sure why there's such a big difference but this came from the forgetty eye um plant so this the, the mother uh, is the forgetty eye here and this one the mother is the mad rag and you can see much less plants and there were a lot more seeds actually however only a handful sprouted so i'm going to try to plant transplant these into a tray like so just like the other ones are in just to give them a bit more space um but they're so tiny i want to be really really careful with it i don't know how i'm gonna how i'm gonna manage that but we shall see so i'm gonna just try gently Ooh, yeah some of these are some of these got stuck to the bottom of the pot which is great it shows brilliant brilliant rootage and i don't want to damage any of the roots so i'm just going to slowly carefully pry it off Okay, that's one here. Another one here and another one here. So that's three. <laughs> We're gonna try to do the same with these. That's four. Oh, I imagine this one's gonna be a bit tricky. Maybe not. That's five, six. There we go. Perfect. Oh, just dropped all of the moss on the floor. <laughs> oh, my days. Okay, that's fine. At least there were no plants in it. No plants were harmed in the making of this video. Not yet, anyway. Made an absolute mess because I dropped that all over the floor. All right, so what I'm going to do is just put the plant in. Try to hover it slightly over the pot. A mistake that I did in my last, in the forgetty eye um, pot was that I put the plants a bit too high. So as they grow, because usually the roots come out after the leaves, so they come out a little bit higher each time. Um, I, I did it way, way, way too high. So what happened is that the new roots were just sort of kind of drying out. So this time I'm just going to be a bit more mindful of that. So yes, next question before I forget. <laughs> What is your most difficult plant? So, I don't know. It, difficulty depends on, you know, what you think is difficult. But for me, a plant that I've been struggling with is my Parezdo Verde, which is back there. Uh, and that thing just will not uh, variegate for me. Uh, it's It started to. Um, however, yeah, it just stopped. And I know you, you, it requires heat and... and humidity and all that sort of stuff but honestly I try to grow most of my plants just outside in my ambient room temperature and it just doesn't seem to love it um, so because of that I would say that's probably one of the more difficult plants that I have to uh, sort of deal with because it just doesn't do what I bought it to do which is to variegate and to look amazing and at the moment it's just sort of sat there <laughs> surviving it's another one of those surviving plants um yeah so that one I'm, i may gift away or or trade or something we will see next question is what philodendron do you like the most so i'll say um at the moment it would have i would have to say that it's my spirit of sancti just because i've sp I spent an absurd amount of money on that plant so if i don't say it i'm doing myself a disservice <laughs> and just so you know it's doing fine it's doing okay um yeah so that's just that's one plant uh but apart from that i'll just say one of my just trooper plants just the ones that just survive through whatever has to be my uh, philodendron imperial red i do really love that plant it was one of the first plants that i got um when i really got into plants like as I said, after I went to my friend's house, it was one of the ones that I saw. I was like, yeah, I want a big plant. And it was that one um, that I chose. 
Um, so that one is always going to be a plant that's close to my uh, close to my heart, my imperial red. What is your favorite alocasia? Now I must admit, I don't think I'm the biggest alocasia fan, uh, like as in general. Although I do have three allocations. I've got the the allocasia poly, which is not doing great. It's got one leaf and that leaf is, is struggling because it got striked down by spider mites. Um, and I've got a, um, I've got the dragon scale. That one, we've, we've had a bit of a touch and go relationship. At one point, I nearly lost it. I've now managed to bring it back, uh, which is nice. Uh, and then I've got a black velvet as well, which is which is really really nice to nice to have. Um, however, I would say as I as I said, then I'm not the the biggest um, alocasia fan, but those ones they they're okay they're okay. I can't I can't complain. Okay, so those ones are in the pot now. So these are the mad. I'm gonna find a way to sort of separate these from each other, but we'll leave that for another day another time next question what plant will you get next um i don't know is the short answer to that i am not too sure what my next plant will be oh is this a this a seed that hasn't sprouted yet oh that's interesting and it's been in there for ages um i am not sure <laughs> it's the short answer i wouldn't mind getting a monstera um, Peru. I, I do think those plants are quite interesting to look at and I did try to get my hands on one when I went to the plant swap because some people were trading them however I think it, I was too late too little too late um, so hopefully I can get one of those in the near future uh, but yeah for now I don't think there is a particular plant I, I am really I think I'm getting into sort of cacti and succulents a little bit more so any sort of weird um, cacti, euphorbia, succulent, like I'm all for it. Um, so yeah, those I would say, but I don't really know. I wouldn't, without seeing them, um, I wouldn't be able to tell you just off the top of my head, like, yeah, this is the name of a particular plant that I really love. Um, I would really love to own. I'm going to do these in sets of two or three, just because there are a lot of them here. So there's two here, so I'm going to just add a little bit of moss to the bottom of that, just like so. I hope that's enough. I'll add a bit more. Next question. Um, do you have any pets? I do not have any pets, although I will tell you that I've had a lot of pets in my lifetime growing up. When I was in, growing up in St. Lucia, I um, had a number of pets i had fish at one point um, i remember having a bird i had a chicken um as well as a bird i had a cat uh, <laughs> um, we had little goats as well which are the cutest little things honestly i do love goats if i if i had my own sort of place of a huge farm i would definitely have goats because they are just amazing animals they are so lively um and really playful as well if you get the you know when, when they're young especially really really friendly animals um so i had goats um like my, my parents had quite like a you know you growing up in the countryside you have a bit of, of space so we would always have like some animals that my parents would always buy to say that yeah you know we're gonna buy them and we're gonna butcher them at the end of the year but they always ended up becoming family pets <laughs> because we would always get attached to them uh, so that was always funny uh i was literally just talking to my mom about that the other day um but yes so i have had a lot of pets in st lucia they're coming over to the uk i've had hamsters i had terrapins uh which are sort of turtle like animals um what else have i had i've had uh had another fish that there's a time, there was a period in my life where i got massively massively into tropical fish and i would love to get back into them again it's an expensive hobby but i really did love it i had like a huge like six foot tank uh with lots of rare fish in there really did you know i really went all out in that hobby um and i really did enjoy caring for those fish so maybe one day in the future 
um, I, I, I might start that up again. Uh, so yeah, so I've had I've had those, and then when I left, um, when we moved houses, that's when I had to sort of get rid of all of the fish um, and sort of start the collection again. So it was it was I didn't start the collection again. It was like it's either I start the collection again, which would be very very expensive, um, or I do something else. And that's I think that's when I sort of got the first odd plant, just to give me something to care for. I love this question. Okay, so would you rather be a the best at home plant YouTuber in the world, B, the most renowned plant conserva conservationist, or C, the only person in the world allowed to have plants at home? <laughs> oh God, what a question, I love it. Um, I would say, I would go for answer A, the best at home plant YouTuber in the world. And I'm not saying that because I want to take your place, other plant YouTubers out there. I'm not saying that at all. Um, it's because it's the freedom. I would love to be able to do this full time. At the moment, I'm still working. Um, if I could do this full time and, you know, I'm, I'm used to it, being my own space, being able to do what I want, um, managing my own timetable and, and so on. I would I would chomp at the, at the fingers for that. Like, I, I would really love to do something like that. Uh, so I would say definitely A, definitely A. Who knows? There's still time. Who knows what the future holds? Somebody asked tips on growing a mango tree. And I must admit, I have never grown a mango tree in my life. So I wouldn't be able to answer that question right now, but I have seen some incredible videos on Instagram of people taking a mango seed, cutting off the husk, um, placing that into a wet bag with some tissue putting it into a dark place into a cupboard or something um and then after a couple of days it will sprout and then they plant it into some some rich organic soil mix so maybe check that out uh give that a go i'm not too sure let me know how you get on if it is successful who knows i might i might try it out i might try a mango bonsai plant at some point so yeah giving me some great great ideas so the last question that i have for you guys today Someone asked, uh, I saw your interview on Beyond the Surface. Beyond the Surface is a podcast hosted by my friend, uh, Leo. Incredible podcast. Definitely go check it out. Uh, it, it, it just It's a really flowing, open format. It's asked questions. People come out with their opinions. Um, and, you know, they're open to be challenged, uh, to challenge things as well. It's, it's just a great space. Um, and he says, I saw your, your interview on Beyond the Surface. Some of your YouTube followers might not know that side of you. Perhaps you could share. So um, it's it's not my platform. I, I must start by saying that. Uh, it's It belongs to, to my friend. Uh, and it's a great, great, great piece of work. And one thing that I really love to do is, um, yeah, just, just look at, life in a new way i love to just i'm a problem solver i think by by trade i just love thinking about things in a new in a new way um love asking questions love finding out answers um when i'm not watching youtube plant videos or pl uh, videos about plants on youtube rather um, i'm watching a lot of like science shows so um a lot of like new technology um you know, things that are happening behind the scenes to sort of change the world, all groundbreaking stuff, look at history and all that sort of stuff and how that intersects and links in with our our lives today. So, and I, yeah, I just love that. I just love having those discussions uh, with people, love debating as well. So that's a little bit of me that you guys probably didn't know about. So <laughs> yeah, I hope, I hope uh, that was uh, insightful for you. But yes, as I said, that brought us to our last question for the day. Thank you guys so much, everyone who provided a question. For those of you who didn't, there is still an opportunity. If you want to ask any other questions, chuck them down in the comment area below. Uh, if you guys like this video, I can do another one very, very soon. If there's anything else you want me to unpick further that I didn't get to touch on in this video, do let me know. Uh, more, than happy, more than happy to do that. I'm an open book. But yes, that was it. I'm going to crack on with the rest of this stuff over here and I'll leave you guys to enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, keep planting.